I'm back with this 2021 Tesla Model 3, and today I'm investigating a microphone issue that I have. Here's what it sounds like. One, three, four, seven, eight, ten. Now at first I thought this was a problem with my phone, but even with my phone turned completely off, I noticed that voice commands in the car weren't working either. It seems like the car was only picking up like every other word that I was saying. Set the temperature to 72 degrees. Set the temperature to 72 degrees. Now I was pretty stumped at first. I didn't even know how to begin to diagnose this issue, but then I got a little bit lucky and I noticed that my subwoofer also seemed to stop working. I didn't have any low end in any of my music. Now, after looking at the wiring diagrams, I noticed that the microphone and the subwoofer do share some wiring, and the subwoofer is right behind this panel here. So what I wanna do is show you how to get into here, and we're gonna see if there's anything that jumps out at us. So the first thing that I wanna do is remove this bottom trim here and this top trim so that we can free up some of this carpet area over here. So to remove this bottom trim, what we can do is just pull up on it. We need to get this rubber out of the way. And then this whole thing can just kind of slide up just like this. On the bottom, you'll see they just have these little metal clips and these just slide into these little slots here. And then for this top piece of trim, you can see there's a push pin here and another one on the other side. We're just gonna go ahead and pop that out. And we'll do the same on the other side and then we can just pull this down. Something like this. I have one more push pin down here that I wanna remove to free up this carpet. And now we can just take this carpet, pull it out of this rubber and we can bend it right out of the way, exposing our subwoofer and our amplifier. Now, immediately, if we look in here, we can see some rust and evidence of water that's been coming in, dripping right on top of the subwoofer box, coming in, I'm guessing, through this tape from somewhere up here. So it looks like we have a water issue in our trunk, I'm guessing from somewhere up here. And so we have two things to do here. The first thing I wanna do is take out the subwoofer and amp. They should come out together with four 10 millimeter screws. And then I wanna actually test to see where water is getting in. So I'm gonna set up a camera inside of here and we'll just flood this area up here and see if we can figure out where water is getting into here. Now that we've got the subwoofer out of there, I can actually see quite a bit of evidence that water has been dripping right off the tip of this. You can see it's got like some salt water deposits. And so I th I'm not sure what the purpose of this tape is. These are the nuts that secure the trunk to, to the back of the car. And, and so I'm just gonna try removing this tape because maybe they just didn't seal these very well. Maybe they didn't use sealant at all. I'm not sure. So I'm just gonna try removing this and we're gonna see what is under there. Okay. What is the purpose of this stuff? So now I'm just gonna take some water and spray it down around this side and see if we can get any kind of water inside the trunk there to kind of reproduce this issue. Now I'm gonna try it with the trunk closed and see if anything happens. I wanna try spraying a little bit of water around this electrical connector here. Maybe it's getting in from behind there. Oh, 
All right, we have found another water issue. I just wanted to take a second to call out how much time we're going to end up saving by working on our own car. We've discovered a water issue up here that might have been missed by a complacent tech. So if you just brought your car to a mechanic or even Tesla themselves, you might get a tech who doesn't care why the problem happened. They're just going to diagnose a bad amp, charge you $1,000 or whatever it is to replace it, and send you on your way without having fixed the core issue that caused the problem in the first place. I've had a bunch of issues like this in the past on this car and on others. And if people don't care about the car they're working on, they might not actually fix it the right way. So if you're willing to do this work yourself, give yourself a pat on the back. It's really gonna save you a lot of time in the long run. So if we look down here, this grommet doesn't take that much force to just kind of open up a little bit. And it's not going to make a very tight seal against this metal. And so it's no surprise that water is going to get in here. And I'm sure some of you are thinking only an idiot would open the trunk and flood this area with a garden hose. Like that's not something Tesla should have to design around. And you're right. But I was recently on a trip where I drove through heavy rain for nine hours straight at highway speeds. So you have a ton of air that's just whipping around in here and it only takes a few drops getting through this to cause some major issues. Now I am curious if Tesla added this tape as a band-aid to later year Model 3s. And so if you have an earlier year, like a 2017 or a 2018, please let me know in the comments if your car has this tape and I'll summarize in the description for everyone else. Now, I think for most people, you're not going to get that much water through this gasket, but even a little bit of water can cause mold issues, rust issues, or in my case, electrical issues. And so we really need to take care of this before the water gets in here. Now, if you want, you can just apply sealant around the edge of this grommet to try to keep water out. But I thought it'd be more durable if we took the grommet out and applied the sealant to the inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reach here and just kind of pull this out and it should just pop out pretty easy because it is just some flexible rubber. Just something like this. If you need a little bit more room to work with, you can even just pull these things down. Something like this. And now we have a little bit more room in this wire to actually get maneuver this thing so we can get some sealant in here. And while I'm doing this, I'm also going to remove this grommet so I can seal up everything inside of here as well. I have had issues with water getting inside of my trunk lid itself. So I'm just gonna seal up everything I can while I'm doing this job. Now I've cleaned up around the grommet where I wanna put some sealant. And in terms of sealant, you can use whatever you're comfortable with, whatever you have around the house. But I wanna caution you against using just a regular silicone sealant. I tried using silicone, spent quite a bit of time, and I waited a day and then actually tested to see if I fixed the problem, and I still had a pretty significant leak. And it turns out that silicone just doesn't stick to rubber that well. It doesn't have very great adhesion strength in general, and so you're gonna wanna steer away from that for this fix. Now, a friend recommended a product called Lexel, so I'm gonna give this a try. I've never used it in the past. It claims that it's instantly waterproof and sticks to almost anything, which sounds ideal. I'm gonna give this a shot, and I'll show you how to do it. So we want to get some sealant all the way around the outside of this thing. And there's not that much clearance to get the tube in there. But if we just take this whole thing, you can kind of walk it out. And now we can actually get to the bottom of it right here. Now we can kind of push it back in, maneuver it some more, get some more down inside of here. Now we can go ahead and push this back in. Just like that. Great. Now I'm gonna apply it to the inside of here and here. Now we can go ahead and stick these back in. For this top grommet, you're first gonna to wanna to remove this plastic from the inside here. And now we can push this plastic down inside of this grommet. And now we can seal around this as one piece. This is not the prettiest job that I've ever done, but I'm happy to keep water 
out of these holes here. If you end up making a mess with this stuff, I found that this goof off adhesive remover is actually doing a really nice job at just cleaning up all of the excess up here and just cleaning up our work. I've waited a day to let it cure and let's do another test. I've sealed up the grommet down here, both of these, the grommet up here and our trunk stop. And if you have a Model 3 or maybe even Model Ys or other Teslas, I would definitely recommend doing these even if you don't have a problem. It's better to catch the problem before it happens. So just seal these up, take care of it before it becomes a problem. To remove the amp from the subwoofer box itself, there's three torque screws, one here, one here, and one down here. Now immediately we can see some evidence of water getting down here. We can see a little bit of more salt water and some corrosion down here. So I think water has been getting inside of this. So we're gonna open it up and see what's inside, maybe see if we can clean it up. We have some tiny little T10 screws all the way around that I'm gonna remove. And now this entire circuit board can just pop out of here. You can see with this board connected that there's a little red light and it's blinking. I'm not sure if this is an error state or if the power is cutting in and out or what. Now I did notice that there are a couple of spots here where I can see a little bit of corrosion on the board. There's one here, there's another one here. I'm gonna try cleaning these up and seeing if that makes a difference. So I just have some white vinegar here. I'm just gonna take a Q-tip and I'm gonna see if I can clean some of this up. I'm gonna clean it off of this contact here. Now I'm gonna look at this side here, see if I can get rid of that. Now, I also see a little bit of corrosion down inside of there that's hard to show on camera. And so I'm going to take off the rest of these screws to try to separate this board. Uh, I know this is a giant heat sink and so we'll probably need some thermal compound to put it back together, but it's what I have to do to try to clean this up. These are T6 screws. So if you don't have a T6 screwdriver, you're gonna need one. We have all of the screws out, so now I'm gonna to try to separate this from the heat sink behind it, and it just pops off. We can see a few more corrosion spots here, and maybe even some interesting solder joints right up there. I just have some electronic cleaner that I'm gonna to use to try to clean up some more of this board since there seems to be quite a bit of stuff on it. Now the green stuff that we're looking at in here is the result of the oxidation of copper. So when copper is exposed to water and air, it turns green, kind of like the Statue of Liberty. And if we can fix this by just cleaning this off, that's way cheaper than just buying a whole new amp. I'm gonna take a little bit of thermal grease and I'm just gonna to touch up these little chips here. Just wanna make sure that they get proper cooling onto our heat sink. Now we can go ahead and put our chip back on top of our heat sink. Now we can go ahead and screw it back down. So I've plugged it back into the car and now we can see that that light is solid. So let's go inside the car and see if it makes any difference. So I've got my phone connected to my car and we've put our amp back together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It looks like our microphone is working. So let's get everything buttoned up and hook up our subwoofer again and see if that works. By the way, I love this DeWalt screwdriver. This thing is so cool. I'll put a link in the description of where to get one if you want to make a really quick work out of stuff like this. Okay. 
And now to test the subwoofer, I found the baddest royalty-free banger I could find. So now that we've got everything working again, I wanted to take a second and talk about what I think was happening here. On most cars, if we got water on our amplifier, it would have blown a fuse and then our microphone would have stopped working altogether. We wouldn't have a subwoofer. A lot of our speakers would just be out, but then we would know, okay, well, why is this fuse blowing? And we could actually go and investigate and figure out what was causing the fuse to blow. But on Teslas, they don't have a traditional fuse box. Instead, they use something called e-fuses. So the computer is listening for how much current each component is taking. And if it draws too much current, it just shuts that circuit off, but then it automatically tries to reset that circuit. And I think it was trying to reset that about once a second, which was causing our intermittent microphone issue. Now Tesla does make diagnostic tools available and I'm sure the logs are just full of entries about this amplifier tripping over and over again. But those diagnostic tools are like 500 bucks a month, which as a hobbyist, I just can't justify. And so if you work for Tesla or you know someone who works for Tesla, I would love to see those log files available in the service mode that we can get without paying that 500 bucks a month. I don't think a log file is that much to ask for and it would have made diagnosing this issue and other issues like it way easier. And now we can go ahead and start buttoning everything back up. So I can just swing this back over and we can start tucking it back inside of this rubber. Now that's tucked away, we can go ahead and start putting back this top piece, which just kind of slides in something like this. And again, we have to get it inside of this rubber. You may have to feel around in the back to make sure that they get inside of their little slots as you do this. It can be kind of a pain, but you get used to it. We can take our push pins and put those back in. Now we can slide in our bottom trim here. Again, we just have these metal pieces here that slide into these slots. Let's try to get everything kind of lined up. And again, it needs to get behind this rubber, which is a pain in the butt, but has to get done. Now Tesla does have a few service bulletins that talk about water getting into the trunk, but I couldn't find any that talk about this grommet. Now, I don't see how this grommet is going to seal very well on any Tesla Model 3, including the new 2024 refresh. As far as I can tell, the 2024 looks almost identical, and so I think this issue is going to affect those as well. And so if you have a Model 3, you're gonna to wanna to take care of this as soon as you can. If you don't have a Model 3 and you know somebody who does, then you'd be doing both of us a favor by sending them a link to this video so that they can take care of it as well. I'll put links in the description to some of the things I used in this video. And if you use those links, I get a small kickback at no cost to you. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and I hope you found this helpful.